So I just got home from a company retreat in exotic tropical Newark. It's an annual thing that we've been doing for four years now. When we first conceived it, of course, the plan was to do it in new locations every year. But then Eli had a kid and we were like, all right, let's just do this thing in Eli's backyard until the kid is old enough to travel easily, right? So that's what we've done. But despite the overwhelming New Jersey-ness of the whole thing, it was a blast again this year. We ate good food, played good games, had great conversations, and it all culminated with a big three-hour live stream for the patrons that make it possible. But the highlight of the week, at least for me, was the fact that we finally got a chance to actually meet Don Ford, Voice of Fantasy and Adventure. Right, like, I mean, obviously we've met him before in a sense, right? He's been appearing regularly on the Bible Peace Theater segments for years now. And we hang out for a while before and after those records to chat and shit. But it's like, you know, 15 minutes here, 10 minutes there. We need to get onto a different record, et cetera, et cetera. It, it, it's never for very long. And it's also, it's never in person, right? Don was going to come by my place when he was nearby, but there was a death in the family that scuttled that plan. So this was the first time that I ever actually had a chance to shake the man's hand or give him a hug. And, and he had a fucking blast too, right? Like he made that abundantly clear. He was a fan of the show before he started doing voice work for us and getting adopted into the Piot family was clearly a big deal for him. The, 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 the week always has this feel of a family reunion and Don has a strained relationship with a lot of his extended family. So that's a feeling he apparently doesn't have a chance to enjoy all that often. So I, I think it ended up being an even bigger deal for him than we'd expect. It even made this little family tree that had all of us slotted in as adopted siblings or cousins, which admittedly was, it was a little weird, right? Especially when you backed out of the Don centric construction and realized that like Eli's mom is now my cousin or something, but, but, but it was flattering as all hell. And it really made me confront a big chunk of my privilege that I often ignore. And, and that's the thing. Look, I'm one of the very fortunate people who has a really awesome biological family that accepts me how I am and always more or less welcomes me, right? I have the, the profound luxury of finding family reunions boring. I get to find Thanksgiving's taxing. I get to be overwhelmed at Christmas. It's the kind of background blessing that you don't notice until you contemplate its absence. But of course, when you spend a lot of time in the atheist movement, you wind up with plenty of reasons to contemplate that absence, right? I literally could not count how many people in my life have been denied that luxury, that exigency, because they rejected the family God or loved the wrong person or expressed the wrong gender. And look, it's a hard thing to cut a family member out of your life. Right, I got family members that are full-on MAGA fuckers. And yes, I generally avoid them like the plague. And that's only partly because their unvaccinated asses might very well have the plague. But they're still my family. I, I'm still polite to them when I see them at reunions and weddings and funerals. I, I'd still invite them to those things. I'd still take their call at three in the morning and help them out of whatever emergency they're in to whatever degree I could. Because they're still my fucking family, right? And I can see how they got roped into all this conservative bullshit. And I know them well enough to see the kernel of goodness in them. And I can't morally justify leaving them helpless when I could help them. But then again, I don't have religion there to do any of the justification. Because when it comes to cutting family ties, you could not find a sharper blade than faith. Faith overrides your natural inborn evolutionary bond by offloading the guilt from your shoulders and placing it on God's. Religions try to take a lot of things that don't belong to them, right? Ethics, love, forgiveness, mercy, charity, but family, that's the one that pisses me off the most, right? Because that's the one thing that they can actually take away from people, and they do. They say, those are some lovely familial connections you have there. It'd be a shame if something were to happen to them, right? They reduce one of the most fundamental of our psychological needs into leverage in their bid for obedience, and whenever your family's mammalian instinct to let you out of that cage is roused, the fear of hell is there to burn their hand the second they touch it. So for whatever it's worth, for all of you who are listening along that are estranged from your family, we're happy that we can offer you whatever para family you find here. I know it's not the same thing, and I know we can't invite you to the reunions and shit, but we're happy to have you here. And if you ask nicely, Don might even add you to his weird little family tree thing. 